as well. Let's start off with uh, SPRO. So SPRO, uh, S-P-R-O, SPRO uh, stands for uh, Sports Professionals. Um, uh, that's the name of the company. And um, with this particular allure here, I did order it off uh, Tackle Warehouse in America. And um, this bait here cost me $6.49 US. So that's six dollars 49 us for a lipless crankbait or a rattling trap or rattle trap i should say as uh, you you boys in america call it um for a lure that well is is super absolutely outstanding okay and when i say outstanding i'm talking uh, a combination of things here uh, i'm talking about value for money uh let's forget about if we were to put aside how much something costs Let's talk about the pure performance of it, how it was made, uh, the detail within the uh, lure itself, and um, you know the performance uh, on, on, when you use it on, on water. So first of all, this is uh, the uh, Aruku Shad 75. 75 meaning, if I just actually measure that up for you guys, it's going to be about, uh, if I get that out of the reflection, about 75 millimeters there. All right, or um, what's 75 millimeters? Just under three inches, just under. All right. So um, they come in four different sizes. Uh, they come in the Junior, which is uh, 3 8 of an ounce at uh, 60 millimeters. Uh, we've got here the 65, which is half ounce at 65 millimeters. Okay, this particular bait here is 5 8 of an ounce at 75 millimeters. And then lastly is uh, the Aruki Shad 85, which is uh, uh, 1 ounce. Uh, at 85 millimeters. Now guys, all these uh, lures come with Gamakatsu hooks. I'm pretty sure that uh, Spro use pretty much Gamakatsu hooks throughout their range. Uh, do keep in mind that with these particular uh, hooks, I have swapped them out. Um, this particular hook here is a, uh, I should say a number four, uh, sorry, excuse me, not a number four, a number, uh, a number six. And uh, this one here is, I believe, uh, well, a smaller, uh, should be a smaller size, but I've, I've changed them both to number sixes, all right, for simply because uh, the reasoning why is because I chase certain species of fish and I feel the need to be able to upgrade the hooks to bigger hooks, okay? Now, let's start off with the physical aspects of it. So, I'll just quickly zoom out here. In terms of the design, it's got, it's a very intricate design, okay? It's got a certain shape to it. Now, with this style of, of shape, I feel where they cut out underneath here behind the uh, back of the belly, uh, moving into the tail, uh, they've done that for a reason. Instead of having it uh, as a more rounded shape here, they've cut that out simply because as the uh, your lipless crankbaits move through the water, they should be moving like, somewhat like that. And I think there is going to be less friction or resistance against the water if this uh, part here is more uh, or cut out. Now, I'm liking the design. Uh, it's done well for me in terms of being able to catch fish. So let's talk about more about the, um, the physical aspects. So 3D mouth, we've got here even a nostril um, Design there, uh, awesome 3D eyes, guys. Really stands out. Holographic as well. We've got really intricate uh, gill plates here, raised uh, gill plates with um, a lot of detail down here and, and, and different sections of the gill plate there. Uh, a smooth finish uh, along there. And if I just zoom in real uh, quick for you here, so you, you see what's going on. We've got here uh, etched scales that have been cut this way and this way throughout the bait, okay? So throughout, behind the gill plates, all the way to the tail. This particular color here is the, um, is the old glory, it's called, and it's an awesome color, guys. It's, it's a combination of really chromed up, uh, got great flashing, but um, really nice colors through here as well, and, and, and a real holographic design. So if I actually just 
swing that for you there. You're going to see a lot of uh, holographic uh, design in that as well, hopefully attracting more fish. Now, this particular model, uh, the color that I actually purchased, uh, like I said, is the Old Glory. It does include, uh, along here, these stuck on scales in a diamond shape so they've been cut out in a, a, a real diamond shape like that i'm just exaggerating that guys but it's a diamond shape um and and stuck on the upper half of the body okay so um companies like uh lucky craft in their ms series use things like this i've never really seen i've seen it on a couple of more baits but yeah it seems like lucky craft really used that uh obviously spro have adopted this uh for their model here uh, it has a really pronounced lateral line as well. Uh, it's not really so seeable on this particular bait simply because we do have those uh, stuck on scales on here, but it's running through that section there. Okay, like I said, it's, a, it's not really pronounced on this particular uh, color, but uh, on, on the different colors, you'll be able to really see that um, outstanding. Alright guys, so it is not a silent uh, bait, it is a, uh, a rattling bait and it has three chambers. So the first one in uh, the head section, uh, second uh, set in the in the middle of the bait and the third set in, in, in the tail of the bait. There is one single uh, metallic uh, ball here, whether that be stainless steel or tungsten, I have not worked out. Uh, there is here plastic balls of a medium size. And then also here are smaller balls, plastic balls I should say, of even smaller size than the medium that's in the middle of the body there. These uh, plastic balls have got, they, they've been drilled through like beads that you would actually uh, make a necklace or, 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 or some sort of <laughs> something else like with your arts and craft. Um, so yeah, they actually got holes through the middle of them. Now, uh, whether or not that helps out with the sound, uh, I'm sure it does affect it. Uh, if they did that intentionally or not, I'm not unsure, but uh, it's a really, really, really loud bait. So it's one of your more uh, loud uh, lipless crankbaits, and I'm gonna give you guys a listen to it right now. So I'll hold back the uh, hook tie here, and then your, uh, your uh, the line tie, I should say, and then the hooks as well, so. All right, so. All right, so more onto the action of uh, this particular lure. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it catches a lot of fish. Um, at the end of the day, this particular uh, lipless crankbait has a fantastic swimming action. It actually, uh, uh, what I look for in a lipless crankbait is even at slower uh, retrieve, so if you're slowly cranking your uh, reel, the action is imparted uh, at a slower rate. Okay, um, obviously, you know, a lot of lipless crankbaits, if you were to rip it really hard with your rod, uh, you're going to get impart action, okay? But I find the ones that are uh, where you're able to fish them a little bit slower, and they still impart action at a slower speed are the more impressive uh, lipless crankbaits. Um, you know, it, it, due to that versatility, because a lot of times I'm obviously gonna wanna try slow that down, okay? Slow that retrieve down. Um, it's got a fantastic uh, shimmy as it uh, uh, drops, okay? But uh, the, the action of uh, itself of this particular uh, lipless crankbait is going to work like this. So obviously from the side here, line ties here, and as you're retrieving it, lipless crankbaits are gonna to wanna to lean uh, this way simply due to where it's anchored onto the bait. So you get this action here. Now some lipless crankbaits are going to be uh, of a tighter wobble, which means uh, very, like a lot of wobble uh, this way and not so much, you know, uh, side-by-side -side movement. This particular uh, crankbait uh, wobbles like, like this as it's going through the water. It's a very, very violent side-to-side -side action, uh, lots of uh, noise, and um, like I said, uh, that action starts even at a slower crank, so at uh, slower speed. I think that's one of the reasonings uh, behind uh, you know, its ability to catch fish. 
One thing that I'm really, really impressed about, guys, uh, with this particular uh, bait is going to be the fact of its construction uh, quality. So uh, design is one thing, uh, and I think they've got that absolutely perfect, but uh, the construction itself, if we have a closer look here, and I'm gonna zoom into the head of it, because I've actually used this uh, particular bait a fair bit, I've actually got a lot of uh, uh, scratching here, and here and along here because as the crankbait's moving through the water column there it's going to be hitting uh, rocks and objects with its, it, its head first of all. Um, I was actually uh, fishing uh, with rocks, uh, a riverbed with heaps of rocks and that was the result uh, after uh, about a day of fishing. Now that's not actually a bad result, I was really uh, hammering this particular bait um, and really trying to um, uh, create a, a reaction strike uh, by well uh, hitting off certain objects and it, it, it's held up pretty well. There's only so much uh, you can expect out of a paint job but I can tell you right now guys this paint job is really 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 tough guys. Very impressive uh, um, bait. So uh, guys stick around for the uh, underwater action of this uh, Aruk, uh, Spro Aruku Shad 75 uh, like I said I'll be playing the sound from the underwater uh, footage as well but uh, just to quickly uh, cap off uh, great design great sound great action and well most importantly great value as well guys 649 US dollars for this bait fantastic thumbs up guys stick around for the underwater action